Welcome to the 14th Sunday after Pentecost. This is streaming worship for Bethlehem Lutheran Church of Chesterton, Indiana, and St. Luke United Lutheran Church of Michigan City, Indiana. To all of those who are members, welcome back, and to all who are visiting with us today, welcome. We begin today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity. We begin today, blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We make your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need. And through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Together, let us recite the Kyrie. Have mercy on us, Lord, and hear our solemn prayer. We come to hear your living word. It saves us from despair. Have mercy on us, Christ, and wash away our sin. Pour out your grace and make us whole, that new life may begin. Have mercy on us, Lord. Make sin and shame depart. Renew us with your saving power. Create in us new hearts. And together let us recite the Gloria. Come, let us join our cheerful songs with angels round the throne. Ten thousand thousand are their tongues, but all their joys are one. Worthy the Lamb that died, they cry, to be exalted thus. Worthy the Lamb our lips reply, for he was slain for us. Jesus is worthy to receive honor and power divine, and blessings more than we can give, be Lord forever thine. Let all creation join in one to bless the sacred name of God who sits upon the throne and to adore the Lamb. Let us pray. O Lord God, enliven and preserve your church with your perpetual mercy. Without your help, we mortals will fail. Remove far from us everything that is harmful and lead us toward all that gives life and salvation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading for today comes from the book of Ezekiel, the 33rd chapter. 
So you, mortal, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning for, from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. Now you mortal, say to the house of Israel, thus you have said, our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How can we live? Say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? Here ends the reading. I invite you to join me in reciting responsibly Psalm 119, verses 33 through 40. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your teaching. I shall keep it with all my heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for that is my desire. Incline my heart to your decrees, and not to unjust gain. Turn my eyes from beholding falsehood. Give me life in your way. Fulfill your promise to your servant, which is for those who fear you. Turn away the reproach that I dread, because your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your commandments, by your righteousness, enliven me. Our second reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans, the 13th chapter. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we were, became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in revealing and drunkenness, but in debauch, not in... Starting at verse 11. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery or licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Here ends the reading. I invite you to join in reciting our gospel acclamation. Alleluia. In Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, 
If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one of or two of the others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. I have a question for you today. How do we order our life together in a world where people always seem to be looking for something to complain about? A world where it is me first. A world that th seemingly thrives on dissension. Today, Jesus weighs in in a surprising fashion, with some pretty practical advice. He says, don't triangulate, be direct. When all else fails, get back up. I have to say I'm a bit surprised by this advice, for Jesus is usually a bit more creative as a teacher. He's more of a storyteller who challenges, stretches, broadens our perspectives in more ways than one. But as they say in real estate, location, 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 when it comes to scripture, it's all about context, context, context. For us to truly understand the inner purpose behind this pretty practical advice, we must first look at where this advice is in relationship to the rest of the narrative that Matthew has placed before us. Taking a look at the text, we see that just before these verses for today, Jesus, the storyteller, shares a well-known parable about the lost sheep. In this parable, Jesus teaches how God's insistence on the care of all is like a shepherd who leaves the flock to look for just one lost sheep. The shepherd leaves the 99 other sheep behind, and he returns with the sheep around his neck, just like those portraits that many of us have seen in Sunday school classrooms. Or maybe not, but I digress. In this parable, Jesus shows how God cares about the one, the individual, usually the one who is most vulnerable. And so in this structure, the practical advice Jesus gives today is bound together with the many creatively told lessons he's taught about God, who wills that not one should be lost, who seeks us endlessly, who welcomes us back with boundless grace. But if we truly want to get the full picture, we can't just look at the verses before the lesson. We must also look at and study those verses that come directly after it. In those verses, we hear Peter asking that famous question of Jesus. How many times then should we forgive someone? Can't you just hear Peter, really Jesus? Come on, how many times do I have to turn the other cheek? 
before I can take my revenge according to the Mosaic law? How long before I can get my eye or my tooth? To which Jesus replies, how does 77 times sound, Peter? Or 70 times seven, depending on which translation you choose. Again, Jesus' creative answer makes keeping track impossible. Because if any of us can keep track of how many times we've forgiven someone, we have way more time on our hands than we know what to do with. But simply, what Jesus is trying to say is, keep on forgiving. Don't worry about winning the battle, because that's not what it's all about. The Mosaic law of one for one is not the way God intended it to be. God's way is the way of grace and seeing the person beyond the sin they committed. Which, hearing all that context, 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 brings us back to the teaching Jesus presents us with today. For his practical advice about conflict this morning points us not towards judgment or punishment, as some suggest that this text gives license for. Rather, it is Jesus pointing us toward intentional, respectful, earnest, and always hopeful reconciliation. Jesus encourages us to seek reconciliation, that is, resolution, compromise, understanding, as we struggle with the all too human challenges of living together in community. He is speaking to the church, you know, to us, to how we order life together in a world that has a nasty tendency to point the finger and find something wrong with everything. He wants to ask the question of how we, the church, the community of Christ, will deal with conflict, with disagreement, and with just plain old bad behavior. And sp speaking of community in Christ, we as humans tend to take the word community and allow it to conjure up warm feelings of love and support within us. But here's the thing. Community is not perfect. Why, you ask? Because community, that is a community, is made up of people. And people, not you and me, of course, but some people can be challenging, difficult, selfish, even unreliable. And Christian community with, while grounded in the love and the grace of God, is still made up of fallible, fragile, sinful people. Perhaps think of it this way. The church is made up of a widely separated family, which has inherited a house in which we have to live together. It is into this reality Jesus speaks, the reality of community, and of sharing a house together. Here's what I hear him saying. People sin. Communities are made up of sinning people. When sin happens and you're involved, try to do something about it. Go talk to the other person directly rather than behind their back. Don't get the gossip mill going. And if that doesn't work, involve others in the community who care for all parties involved. It doesn't always work out, but be ready with grace. Isn't that what it means when Jesus says, treat them as a Gentile or a tax collector? Be ready to welcome them back. Be ready one day to extend grace and forgiveness again, while in the meantime, trusting God to provide for that future. Maybe Jesus' practical advice invites us, yes, us, to get creative in the ways we seek reconciliation when our humanity gets the better of us. 
Remember, community is hard work, just as holding a family together is hard work, despite what Hallmark might tell us. But it matters, and it's worth it. For as Jesus promises, where two or three are gathered, amazing things can happen. God ends up being right there with us. And even when it's hard, and we want to throw in the towel, walk out the door, and take our toys home with us, community still gives us a glimpse of heaven while on earth. For it is in the hard work that we see God present. When grace is given and received, we see God with us. Philip Yancey tells a story that illustrates this idea. In his book, Finding God in Unexpected Places, where he writes, On a trip to South Africa, I met a remarkable woman named Joanna. She is a mixed race, part black and part white, a category known there as colored. As a student, she agitated for change in the apartheid and then saw the miracle that no one predicted the peaceful dismantling of that evil system. Afterward, for many hours, she sat with her husband and watched live broadcasts of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission hearings. Instead of simply exulting in her newfound freedoms, Joanna decided to tackle the most violent prison in South Africa, a prison where Nelson Mandela had spent several years. Tattoo-covered gang members controlled the prison, strictly enforcing a rule that required new members to earn their admittance to the gang by assaulting undesirable prisoners. Prison authorities would look the other way, letting the so-called animals beat and even kill each other. Alone, this attractive young woman started going each day into the bowels of that prison. She brought a simple message of forgiveness and reconciliation, trying to put into practice on a smaller scale what Mandela and Bishop Tutu were trying to effect in the nation as a whole. She organized small groups, taught trust games, got the prisoners to open up about the details of their horrific childhoods. The year before she began her visit, the prison recorded 279 acts of violence. The following year, there were two. Joanna's results were so impressive that the BBC sent a camera crew from London to produce two one-hour documentaries on her. I met Joanna and her husband, who has since joined her work in the prison at a restaurant on the waterfront of Cape Town, ever the journalist, I pressed her for specifics on what had happened to transform the prison. Her fork stopped on the way to her mouth. She looked up and she said, almost without thinking, well, of course, Philip, God was already in the prison. I just had to make him visible. And making God visible, she helped to build true community, which while not perfect, because we remember that it is made up of people who have messed up repeatedly, was one in which grace and forgiveness began to abound. And I think that's the profound truth about community Jesus places before us today. Community is messy, and it will never work perfectly because community is made up of human beings who are all too able to fall into sin, big and small. But even in the midst of this fallibility, this frailty, when we really take a dive bomb in and miss the mark, where we might even unintentionally or even intentionally hurt another, God's answer to us is grace. How do we order life together in a world with a terrible habit of finding the differences, the irritant, the worst in others, and putting it on display? 
we take a note out of Jesus' playbook, and we opt not for revenge, not an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but with grace. We reach out to that person, and we see them for the child of God that they are. We work with them and the rest of the community as necessary in order to restore the community to its fullest sense of reconciliation. Yes, community is messy. No, it will never work perfectly. But if God's answer is grace, then maybe God in Christ Jesus can begin to lead us to that answer as well in this household that we've inherited. And so we say today, thanks be to God. Amen. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn together by the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need, responding to each petition with the words, hear us and help us. Unite your church, O God. Give to all the baptized the gifts of repentance and reconciliation. Strengthen ecumenical partnerships and interracial cooperation among the churches. Guide the work of the Lutheran World Federation and the World Council of Churches. O God, leader of the church, in your mercy, hear us and help us. Protect your creation, O God. Teach us ways to live that do not harm what you have entrusted to our care. Give to the animals that habitat they meet Protect your creation, O God. Teach us ways to live that do not harm what you have entrusted to our care. Give to the animals the habitat they need for life. Renew and enliven places suffering from drought, flood, storms, or pollution. O God, creator of the earth, in your mercy, hear us and help us. Bless the nations, O oh God. Frustrate the designs of dictators. Give to the military a clear and moral purpose. Guide legislators, civil servants, judges, and police toward the well-being of all. Infuse the coming election season with honesty and integrity. O oh God, governor of the world, in your mercy, hear us and help us. Sustain us in our work, O God, and give us employment to those who need it. Shape societies to ensure fair treatment for all who labor. Help us to love our neighbors and in and throughout our work. O God, guardian of all peoples, in your mercy, hear us and help us. Guide our civil discourse, O God, Alert us to social evils and show our nation how to end the patterns of racial injustice. Accompany all who are endeavoring to bring about a renewed society. Curb the violence in our cities. 
O God, haven of righteousness, in your mercy, hear us and help us. Tend to all in need, O God. Assist all friends and family members who are seeking restored relationships. Give community to the lonely and welcome to the outcast. Shelter all who are vulnerable in body, mind, or spirit, especially those we name here before you. O God, physician of the sick, in your mercy, hear us and help us. Receive once again, O God, our plea for the end of the coronavirus. Comfort those afflicted with COVID-19 and uphold our medical workers. Give youth a sense of responsibility for others and provide the world a vaccine. O God, healer in times of plague, in your mercy, hear us and help us. Hear each one of us, O oh God, as we now pray for ourselves. O oh God, lover of us all, in your mercy, hear us and help us. We remember with thanksgiving those who have died in faith. As you equipped them, equip us with your protection and power until with them we see your salvation. O God, eternal one, in your mercy, hear us and help us. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. It is at this time in the service in which we would normally invite the congregation to make their offerings unto the Lord whether they be time, talent, or treasures. Since we are gathered in different ways than normal, we thank all of those who have thought ahead and have given their gifts to God to support the ministry and mission of God here on earth. We thank you most heartily. For those for whom this ministry has been beneficial, we invite you to make a gift towards continuing this ministry. Any and everything is good and worthy in God's eyes. And we thank you for whatever gift, whether it be time, talent, or treasures that you can give. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us with this rich food and drink, and send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world. Through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, 
and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. And together we recite the Sanctus. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, you have brought us this far along. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us but guided us into the path of love and light. In every age you sent prophets to make known your living will for all humanity. The cry of the poor has become your own cry. Our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire. In the fullness of time, you sent your chosen servant to preach good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcast and the despised, and to ransom those things in bondage to prejudice and sin. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. supper, he took the cup, gave it to all his disciples, and again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant for you and for all. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free all the earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Come, Lord Jesus, and let the church say, Amen. Amen. Send your Holy Spirit, our advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come, spirit of freedom, and let the church say, Amen. Amen. Join our prayers and praise with your prophets and martyrs of every age, that rejoicing in the hope of the resurrection, we might live in the freedom and hope of your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Together we recite the Agnus Dei, the Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you bear the sin of all the world away. You suffered death our lives to save. Have mercy now, we pray. O Lamb of God, you bear the sin of all the world away. 
You set us free from guilt and grave. Have mercy now, we pray. O Lamb of God, you bear the sin of all the world away. Eternal peace with God you made. Give us your peace, we pray. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with the food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard, to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst. Guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ and led by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And now, Mother in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. I invite you to uh, check out the individual congregational websites, blcin.com and stlukeunitedlutheran.org for our weekly announcements. And if you have any questions, please feel free to call either church office. Be at peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Amen. We thank you for joining us on this live stream of worship, and we pray that you will be able to join us again in the future. May God's blessings be with you always. Amen.